Hi everyone, my name is Omar and in this video I'm going to show you how to create an ingress controller in a private AKS cluster in Azure. So you might be asking, what is an ingress controller? It is a piece of software that provides reverse proxy, configurable traffic routing, and TLS termination for Kubernetes services. In other words, it is a specialized load balancer for Kubernetes and other containerized environments. For many companies, bringing production workloads into Kubernetes it represents some challenges and complexity around application traffic management. By using an ingress controller and ingress rules, a single IP address can be used to route traffic into multiple services inside a Kubernetes cluster. So you might be asking now, how do I know if I need an external ingress controller for my AKS or not? Well, an ingress controller abstracts away the complexity of Kubernetes application traffic routing and provides a bridge between Kubernetes services and external ones. So you might consider um, a production grade external ingress controller if you find yourself applying configuration changes uh, to your ingress controller very often or very frequently in order to avoid complexity. Best advice here is to always read the documentation from the provider just to make sure that the solution that you're looking at, it really suits your needs. And here I'm providing a list of a few ingress control solutions out there, but keep in mind that there are many others. In my lab, I will be using Nginx ingress controller, and uh, but keep in mind that Istio is a service mesh that you can use as an alternative for an ingress controller. And uh, out there is also open service mesh from Microsoft, which is a lightweighted version of Istio, but at the moment of this recording is actually in public preview and it's not recommended for production until it is generally available. I'm gonna leave some reference links in the description below of this video where you can find more information about ingress controllers. And with that said, let's get started. All right, enough of the bullet points and let's get our hands dirty. I want to drive your attention at the environment that I have deployed in Azure. So let's start with my VNet, which is currently, which it currently has two subnets, one called management subnet and a subnet dedicated to the AKS cluster. Now let's check out the Azure container registry first and notice that is in the premium tier because at the moment of this recording, Azure supports private endpoints for container registry at the premium tier. So please review the pricing information so you can have an idea what will be the impact in terms of costs. Also notice that in the networking blade, the public access is disabled and I have configured a private endpoint that is pointing to my management subnet where my VM is currently deployed. Also notice that because it's a private container registry, the repositories are not visible in the portal because I'm trying to access this blade from my regular laptop, which is considered an external resource and it doesn't have access to the VNet or subnet where the private endpoint has been created. And this is how you can effectively secure your resources with private links and private endpoints in Azure. Now let's check out the AKS cluster, which is also private. I'm using version 1.21.2. It has RBAC enabled and is marked as a private cluster. In my case, I only have one node pool with two nodes. The max pods I define when I was creating it is around 30 max pods. And the size that I'm using is standard B4 MS for the VM scale sets. And again, keep in mind that since this is a private AKS cluster and private container registry, they are restricted to the traffic within my VNet. Therefore, I don't have access from my laptop since the traffic from my laptop to the AKS cluster and to my container registry is considered external. This is the reason I needed a VM jump box deployed inside the VNet in order to access the container registry on my AKS cluster. 
you can refer to the scripts I put in the repo under the steps by steps guide folder to create this environment. Now that you have an idea on what the environment looks like, let's SSH into the VM we created in order to create our ingress controller. Once you SSH into your VM, into your Linux VM, make sure that you have Docker, Azure CLI, Kubernetes CLI, and Helm installed, which for this lab, I'm using version 3.7.0. Okay, so I did some work in advance, which I created a few YAML files, and I also downloaded a specific Nginx ingress version, which is the TGC file that you see here. I will explain more shortly. So once you SSH, also you will need to run AZ login to access our Azure environment. And uh, also you may need to run AZ account set minus S and your subscription ID, right? So let's go ahead and define our variables. We will do AZ, AZR login registry to access our container registry in just a few. But to control image versions, you want to import them into your own Azure container registry. The Nginx ingress controller Helm chart relies on three container images, which are listed right here. We will import those images in just a second, but before we do so, let me access the cluster. I will run AZ AKS get credentials, the name of my AKS cluster and dash G for the resource group. And I will run it with the admin flag. I want to show you that right now I don't have anything deployed in my AKS. So you can see the namespaces I have are the ones that are by default when you when the cluster gets created and same as the services as well, right? All right, so let's go ahead and run AZ ACR repository list. So you can also see that at the moment there are no registries listed there. And there you go. So right now we are going to run AZ ACR login and the name of the registry, which it was succeeded. And now we are going to run the AZ ACR import to import the three images that we were talking about. Now, when this is done, there is one more repository I want to import before uh, we proceed with the creating the ingress controller. And I want to show you how the commands work with the new version of Helm 3.7. You remember the ingress, uh, the TGC file that I'm showing here? Well, I will extract the file so you can see what they have. So let me create a directory called chart-yaml. I will move the package there and extract it. Let me change to the directory and list the files here. And let's cut the chart.yaml file to check the version that was downloaded to validate and make sure that we have the correct version. Now let's say you created your own chart and want to push it to the container registry. Well, you can run Helm package at the folder level where the chart.yaml file is and it creates the package for you. See the .tgc file here uh, is the same as the package we got originally. Now let's push this into the registry, but let's authenticate with the registry, with the Helm registry command. For this, you have to run export Helm underscore experimental underscore OCI equals one. And then you will run the Helm registry login command that I have here, you can use the expose token flag and pass the command using username 000.0 and so on. Now we are going to push the Helm chart by running Helm push. 
we're going to point to the TGC file and OCI column slash slash you're going to put your registry and the path where you want this to be now to validate that we can pull this chart let's go ahead and delete the package locally and let's run helm pull with the ontar flag to validate you can pull it from the registry by using this you're going to put the path as well notice that it creates a folder called ingress dash endings okay now we will proceed to create the ingress controller by default Nginx ingress controller is created with a dynamic public IP address assignment but since this is a private cluster I don't necessarily want to expose it with a public IP so I created a file called internal ingress.yaml in my case I already checked the IP that I want to use which is inside the subnet where the AKS is created and uh, I'm going to be using the 10.100.2.100. Let's go ahead and create our namespace now uh, by using kubectl create namespace and the name of my namespace. Let's check that it's uh, there, kubectl get namespaces. And there you go. It has been created six seconds ago. So we're good to go. Now, let's run helm upgrade install will give it a name and in my case it's already defined my variables this will be pointing out to the extracted folder when i run the ontar and i will specify the version 3.36.0 and we will define the images that we want to use from previous command with the set like this also, we need to point to the ingress file we created earlier with the dash F for the file flag. Now let's take a look at the services with the kubectl get services dash A. And notice I have one that on the external IP, it has the IP that I defined earlier in the ingress file. And you may need to wait uh, for a little bit until it shows up. Now let's go ahead and create our demo applications. To see the ingress controller in action, we will run two demo applications in our AKS cluster. Let's deploy the AKS hello world YAML file by running kubectl apply minus F and the name of the file. And inside the namespace ingress basic and the ingress demo YAML as well. We're gonna run the same command. Before creating the ingress route, let's delete this validation webhook. I found that this doesn't work with the Kubernetes version uh, that I have here. And also we don't need it, so that's a reason. And, and it gives an error, so in order to avoid that, I'll, I'll go ahead and delete it. Now let's create an ingress route. I have a file called hello-world-ingress.yaml. And uh, now to, tra to route traffic to each application, let's create a Kubernetes ingress resource. The ingress resource configures the rules that route traffic to one or the two applications. In this example, traffic to the address HTTP low, and then you load balancer IP is routed to the service name AKS hello world. Traffic to the address HTTP load balancer IP and then the slash hello world 2 is routed to the ingress demo service. Okay, great. So I also have a Windows VM inside the VNet so you can see how it looks from the browser perspective. There you go. If you see this image, you have successfully created your ingress controller into your AKS cluster. I really like to do this type of tutorials manually first, so whenever you create your pipeline and automate the steps later on, you can understand what is really happening behind the scenes. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like this content, you know what to do. Please subscribe below and hit the bell for notifications when I upload new content. Thank you for watching and see you in the next time.